Welcome to another informational show about social media marketing. If you're a band, a business, or use social networking, you want to hear Highway to Success with your host, Cynthia McIntosh. And good afternoon, everyone. It's time for the Highway to Success show. We look forward to bringing you a radio show every week that will provide you with tools that will help you to find your way to success. And boy, did we do our job today. About six years ago, I was working with a young man out of New Mexico who was wanting to put together a band. So he came out to L.A. for a few days. I introduced him to a couple of professional musicians that I thought would be perfect for the kind of band he was looking for. And it was instant chemistry. The band was anything and everything that we had hoped for. Three hours later, I had them at a professional recording studio recording a demo. I had never been at this specific recording studio before, but I had heard some wonderful things about it and wanted to see for myself what kind of work they did. The experience was absolutely incredible, and it was one I have never forgotten. This guy is a real mover and shaker. He just makes things happen. He loves what he does, he's one of the best at it, and man, does it show. Our guest today is a very successful businessman, an accomplished drummer to say the least, a music producer, a two-time record producer of the year award winner, and is the creator and host of the Ask Dino show on television. He also composes music for film and TV. So it doesn't matter what kind of business you're in, you will get something out of today's show. But if you are an indie musician, today's show is going to be one you really, really do not want to miss. I'm very excited about today's guest and honored to have him on the show. Believe me, if anyone knows how to be successful in the music business, this guy does. So you definitely want to hear what he has to say. But first, we're going to play some music for you. It's brought to you by a beautiful young lady by the name of Hannah Clive. The name of the song is Ten Steps. She has a beautiful voice and I know you'll enjoy it. So, we'll be back with you and our special guest right after this. Tears that come, spouting when I'm next to 
expecting just when I think I'm strong. And if I called you, said to you, you know I'm pretty sure I might forget. But then loving you is too painful, and my needs could never be met. Tell me, are you satisfied to hear me utter these words? I'm so sad we could fix it. Guess some victory of sorts is yours. And now, ten steps from the finish. Or is it ten steps from the start? Oh, my head is spinning forward. back with Highway to Success with Cynthia McIntosh. And welcome back to the Highway to Success show. We are just listening to 10 Steps by Hannah Clive. And I'm so excited and honored to be introducing our guest today. Dino Madelon owns a state-of-the-art recording, mixing, post-production studio and has worked with major and independent record companies and also film and network and cable television. As a very accomplished musician and successful businessman, Dino is going to share his experiences to help us to grow our own businesses. Dino, you have so much to share with us that I just want to get started. Thank you so much for being on the show. Welcome. Thank you, Cynthia. Glad to be here. First off, congratulations on your new 2012 Producer of the Year Award. That is oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's uh, the second time in four years, so I'm really excited about that. The, the award show is going to be in November, so I'm really excited about that. I bet. That is incredible. Yeah. So let me ask you then. There must be at least one thing that you attribute your success to. What would that be? One thing? Well, at least one thing. Okay. Well, I, I think <laughs> perseverance. You know, I mean, uh, you know, you have to you have to hang in there. I mean, it's, uh, if, if I was to pick one thing, it'd, it'd be perseverance, and that and that's and that's what everybody should have is perseverance, no matter what they do. You have to keep at it. So, if I was to say one word, there's a lot of things that contribute to it, but if I was to be, only be able to pick one word to be perseverance. Yeah, well, are there other things that you think are really important for our listeners to consider? Well, I, you know what, you, you, there's, a, there's a lot of things you have, to, you, have to, you have to really learn about music. You have to learn about the business. You have to learn about, about music. I mean, if, uh, there's many aspects you can be in mm -hmm. uh, in the music industry, whether you're an artist or whether you're a producer or a songwriter or, 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 or a publisher or you have to learn about it. You have to get the facts about it. You got to get background on it. Don't just jump into it and say, "Oh, this is going to be fun. I'm going to have a good time." And uh, you have to learn about it, especially nowadays, because people are not stupid these days. There's too, there's way it's way too easy to get information with the internet and everything. So you have to really learn about it, and then you have to know if you have talent or not. You have to real don't just listen to mom and dad say, "Oh, you're great." You have to really. You have to know, you know, like Clint Eastwood said, you have to, a man's got to know his limitations. You have to know if you should be in the business or not. Right. Yeah, I know I've said yeah. to a lot of musicians, if you treat your music like a hobby, it's going to treat you like a hobby. If you treat it like a business and take it seriously, it'll do the same for you. You can't just... Absolutely. You, you have to treat it like a business. I right. totally agree with you. Right. You can't just assume that because you've got a great voice and you've got talent that you're going to make it. No, uh, uh, you know, un unfortunately, uh, because of you know the, the the digital world and the internet, everybody is allowed to be on the playing field now. As before, just you had to have talent, you had to have uh, 
be in the right place at the right time. You had to have people that were, were putting you there. Now you can put yourself there. So that means everybody can put yourself there. So you have to really, really pay attention to yourself, and you have to, you have to work it every single day. You have to facilitate what you're doing every day as, as a job. Uh, if you want to make it a hobby, have fun, fine, but don't expect to make a living out of it. If you want to make a living out of it, then you have to facilitate what you do every single day. Amen. That brings up a good point. I know one of the things that I have discussed with a lot of musicians that they do have to work it every day. Why? What do you suggest as being the best? When you talk about working it every day, what do you, obviously I'm working on social media marketing and marketing in general. So to me, I, that's my focus. What is your focus when it comes to working it every day? Well, you have to work on your craft. You have to work on your, there's, there's two things. There's twofold, your, art, your artistry, what you are as an artist. Whether you're a singer, then you work on your vocals every day. If you're a drummer, you work on your drums every day. Um, you have to work on your craft every day. You have to practice every day. You have to write or, or something, spend an hour or two or three or whatever on your craft. And then the other part is the business end, and that is, that is facilitating what you do, promoting, uh, uh, putting out whatever you can, and you can sit there from home. But we used to have to, well, when I was gigging years, people would have to go out and hit, and hit the pavement and, 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 and do all the promoting and all the this and that. Now you can just sit right in front of your computer and you can do it all. I do it every single day as long as I've been in this business and as long as I've, I've had owned studios for 26 years now. And uh, I have a television show now, and I, and I facilitate my television show every single and my business too, but my television show, I'm on that computer every day talking to my viewers, uh, promoting. Um, uh, I'm, you know, I have to, you have to put things out every single day, and this is what I'm talking about facilitating. You can't sit back and wait for somebody to come and see you. It ain't going to happen. You have to put yourself out there. Right. And you have to do it every day. Now, what tools do you use for getting yourself out there? What do, you, what do I use? Right. What are you talking about? When you, when, what do you use to get your, your television you show, for example? You have to go on the Internet, and you have to find the sites that are – that you have to put yourself on every single music site you can get yourself okay. on. Okay. Now, are you talking, talking about, about like – make, uh, make, First of all, make great recordings. Don't make right. crap recordings. Make <laughs> great recordings. Make great videos. You, it, it's, we're a visual world now. We're not just about right. audio. We're about visual make a great recording, make a great video. And then once you make that, you put together a thing called an EPK, electronic press kit. You put together an electronic press kit and you go on that internet and you search for every single site that, 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 that you can put yourself on, put yourself on and then you, you also, first of all, you, you try to communicate with people first to say, yes, I'm sending you that. But there's also sites out there that are that are money-making sites that are looking for songs, that are looking for artists, that are looking for people to do shows. Um, you know, and you've got to facilitate. You know, make a great product first. Make a great product. Don't make junk. Make a great product, and then go on the internet and search. Do your homework. Find out. Ask your friends. Network. Put yourself out there. Okay, don't sit back and think they're going to see you because they're not. Because they're not going to see you because there's 50 bajillion people that are trying to be do the same thing. So you have got to persevere. Now, if you persevere and you get yourself out there, make sure you do not have crap. It has to be good because you can get in the door the first time, but you cannot get in the door the second time if you have junk. Getting in the door the first time is the easiest door you'll ever get in. Second door is the hardest door. <laughs> and you can get in that second door if you have good quality stuff. Amen. You know, you brought up EPKs, and it's funny because I've done two of those in the last week, but it's amazing how many people don't have them, and they expect potential vendors, venues to go on their website and read through pages and pages of information and watch tons of videos. And you are so right. With an EPK, basically it's a summary, and they've got just, it's the first impression. You've got the first impression, you get your foot in the door, and it's got to happen really quickly because it is so competitive anymore. And if you don't do that and do it in a professional manner and do the best you can, you, you're right. You do not get a second chance. There are too many people well, out there. Well, on your EPKs, make sure that your EPKs are short. Make sure they're to the point and do not sit there and talk about your life and your, what you did in grade school and how great you won this contest or whatever. Just put on the facts. Put on this is what we do. This is what we are. And this is what we've done. And when you write the things that you've done, write the stuff that are of merit. Don't write stuff that means nothing. Write stuff that, if you have anything of merit. Now, if you don't, just say, 
here's the song, here's what we are, here's the bio. Keep your bio short. Say, say exactly what you've done, but do not expound on your entire life. Don't say, well, you know, we met and we did this and nobody cares about that. All I want to know is what you're doing now, what you have got going now, and your songs and your contact information, and that it. Put some, fo- put, put some photos on. Again, because, see, I, I'm one of the guys you want to reach, you know what I mean? So I know right. what we want to look at. We want to look at, we're visual, we want to see the pictures, we want to see the fan base, we want to see a, a great video, even if it's a minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, don't put on your life story and 10 minute, 20 minute videos and 90 videos, just put on the best that you've got, make it to the point. Correct, yes. Well, we obviously have quite a few indie artists listening to this show that really believe in their music, they're very talented, but they're struggling for their break, they're struggling for somebody to hear them. And I've actually talked to a few of them in the last couple of weeks. What is your best advice that you can give them for looking for their getting break, their break, getting their break? Um, well, it's kind of the same advice I've done. Now, what, what you got to do is, um, you, you, you know, you put yourself out there, uh, obviously, on the Internet, but you also have to have a great show. You have to have a really good show. Now, unfortunately, the way these shows are, you know, there's always, you know, eight bands, five bands, six bands, ten bands and you get hardly any sound check, and you you got to get up there and do the best you can, and it's not really very, very uh, 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 good for the artist these days. But you got to, you know, that's the game. So you have to do a great performance. Dress the part. Don't dress like a bum, and don't dress like a, uh, you know, make sure that you look like you should be on that stage. No matter what vibe you have, make sure it's a vibe. And get out there, and, and uh, um, uh, when you do your show, make sure you talk to people. Uh, talk to the audience. Don't just sit there and just, you know, our next song is that a talk to them. Have a conversation. Make the, break that wall down between you and them. Uh, make them comfortable. Make them relax. And, and, and uh, um, you know, have a great time on your shows. Make people want to see you again, okay? Now, as far as getting a big break, you know, it's, it's, it's the same old thing, being at the right place at the right time. But if you're not out there and you have great product, great show, when you get in that place, nothing's going to happen. So get prepared and just keep doing it. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Yeah, I have talked to a few agents who have told me that when they look at videos, what they are looking for specifically is how you interact with your audience because the audience is there to be entertained. They're not there to listen to your talent even. They want to be entertained. And if you get up there, even if you're great, but you sit there and you look like you're at your job and they're not having fun, then that is that is not going to be a good good product for you but they want a video that shows how well you really do pull the audience in and how well you do entertain them because that's really what you're there for so exactly that, uh, we are human beings and we go out to be escape we watch bands we watch entertainers to escape and if you have a wall up between you and them they will not be able to escape because they'll feel like they're just watching a television show or a video if you like your best entertainers though you know the Bruce Springsteen's and and, and uh, uh, you know anybody that's like been around forever? You watch their shows, and they they you can have twenty, fifty thousand people, and they will make it seem like they're talking to you. You know you have to be able to connect with your audience. You have to talk to them. You have to you know have a conversation with them. Don't just say, and thank you. And our next song is, and uh, we're going to be at so and so, and da da da. No, have a conversation. Just talk to them. Just invite them into your performance. And they will go, you know what, I'm going to go see them again. I like them. That was very cool. You know, it's like anything else. We want to, we want, the audience wants to feel like they are, are a part of what you're doing. Yeah, it's amazing how there are actually plenty of artists out there that are very well known and very successful. They aren't really that great, but they're good entertainers and they're fun to watch and they're going to pull the crowd in. And at the same exactly. time, there's a lot of uh, entertainers that are not, uh, they're not great singers and they're not, uh, they're not great at what they do but they know how to connect with the audience and people love that and they go see them it's like you know they have fun it's all about having fun no matter what that's all it's all about having a good time yeah that's pretty much what music is all about is making you feel good right (laughs) well music music is a audio movie it's it's an emotion you know when you go to the movies you want to be you want to be you want to be moved emotionally whether it was scared or happy or sad or or you know crying or whatever you want to be moved emotionally, and music, if you don't move the person emotionally, audio-wise, uh, then you have not done your job. And if you're performing, you have got to be able to make somebody, 
you know what it's like when you go see like the you know your favorite band and you're all excited before they even come on stage or like you're just like can't wait well that's because they earned that they earned that you know and you're not going to get people to be excited about you unless you earn it you know you have to earn that and in order to get that you have to got to, you have got to go out there and you have got to perform and 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 even if it's five people you go out there and it's five people or 5,000 or 50,000, you've got to perform. You have to make those people feel like you are there for them, no matter what. That's, they're, again, they're, they're there to have fun, to be entertained, and if you're not entertaining them, it's amazing. You can have, you can go to groups. I've been to concerts where really the people aren't that talented, but yet there are scalpers out there selling tickets for hundreds of dollars because it's a popular band that people want to hear because they just put on a great show. Right. And uh, now, let me ask you, you're talking, when you look at it from a business perspective, which I really feel a lot of musicians, especially indie musicians that are out there that are very talented and they're trying to find their way, one of the things I find is a real weakness is the business aspect of taking care of their music. They have fun doing the music itself, but when it comes to actually doing the business part, they're just not motivated, they're not interested, because it's not what they do. It's not what they're interested in. They don't necessarily want to go out there and do research on how to keep track of where they're supposed to be, or how they're going to keep track of how they're going to market, or how they're going to... Yeah, you know, It's just not part of their makeup. They just, they're into the music, and they'll sit there and play music 24-7, and they're happy. How does one get motivated to actually handle the business aspects of music when you're really a musician and that's all you want to do? How do you get people to do what they need to do to actually be professional musicians versus just a musician? Well, artists are, artists are driven by emotion. They're emotional people. That's why, uh, you know, whether it's actors or musicians or whatever, um, they're driven by emotion. That's why they, that's why they can do what they do. Uh, but nowadays... You know, you either have some. In, in the old days, you have a man, you had managers and you had agents and all that, and you still do nowadays. But because of the fact that you can do all this stuff yourself, and because there's so many people trying to do it, you have to do this stuff yourself. So you have to tell yourself: Do you want to succeed, or do you want to just have fun? Okay, if you want to have fun, then don't do any business. Just go out and, and perform and play at a coffee house, or you know, get a get a gig at uh, some club or whatever, and then go home and then then go to your job the next day. But if you want to make it in the business, you have got to tell yourself, I've got to do this stuff. You've got to, uh, you have to have a uh, performance hat, and then you have to have a business hat. And all these performers out there uh, that are making, you know, the top 1% of the top 5%, like your Justin Bieber's and, 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 and uh, Usher's and, and uh, uh, Rihanna's and all these people out there that are, that are uh, making major dollars, uh, J Lo, perfect example. You know, you have to you have to multitask, which means that you not only have to do your gigs, but you have to have a perfume line, a car uh, car commercial, clothing line, uh, um, your merchandise. You know, for for the people that have not made the big dollars, it's your merchandise. You got to have merch. You got to have you got to sell your hats, your t-shirts, your 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 whatever you're selling. You have to have your merch together. So the answer to your question is this: If you want to do it, you got to do both. If you want to make it in the business, you have got to do both. You have to have your your performance hat and your guy on stage hat, and then that when you're off that stage, you immediately put on your business hat. And you better take care of business, or you will not get anywhere in the industry. Nowhere. Wow, that's there's a lot there. Well, what's your and, advice? And that should be your motivation, Cynthia. Right. Your motivation is this. If you want to make it in the business and make money and, and become a star, quote-unquote, then you have to do the business because your performance – will not be enough. Anybody that's a record company, or distribution company, movie company, television company, when they see an artist that's a lazy, like, not taking care of business, you are gone. There's 50, there's 50 million people waiting in line to take your place. You're gone, and you'll never get back. Period. End of story. Wow. <laughs> that's a, there's a lot there for you guys to eat on, huh? Hey, what's your best advice? Okay, you mentioned managers. What is your best advice regarding managers? I talked to some that have them, some don't. Some have their mom as their manager. Some, you, th right, there's well, a lot of, of different... All, don't have your mom as a manager. <laughs> that's, that's proven in any uh, level of business, uh, you know, from the uh, Lindsay Lohan uh, to the guy in a garage band. Do not have your mom as a manager. Unless she's already an established, licensed, professional manager that has other famous clients, then maybe. But there's professional managers out there, the Jim Morris, guys like that, that are like you know mega, mega managers that only deal with mega stars. 
there's lower level managers, there's medium level managers. Don't whatever you do, do not have a relative as a professional manager because because if you get into any situation, they are going any record company or whatever they're going to the first thing they're going to say is who's your management. And if you have a relative or somebody that's just you know they're, they're gone. You have to have a professional manager. Now, in order to get a professional manager, you got to do all the things I told you. You've got to go out, get a great show, get a, build your audience, um, facilitate your music. Uh, a management company wants to work with somebody that's that's in business, not just some schmo that's really good. Because there's 50 gazillion schmoes that are really good. They want somebody that has a complete package. I'm not going to deal with anybody that's a drunk or a drug addict or an asshole, an a hole. Excuse my but language, <laughs> I'm not going to deal with anybody that's an idiot, a drunk, a drug addict, or someone that does not take up care of business. If I call you and you don't call me back, or if I if I say I'm going to call you at three and you're oh man I was out partying all night I'm sorry forget it you're gone you know the the, the day of the drunk rock star is gone gone. So you got to take care of business. You got to do everything I told you. Do all those all those steps and build your audience. And a management company will see that because they're in business. A management company wants to make money. A record company wants to make money. They're not in this to just you know make you a star. They want they want to make money. So they're not going <laughs> to work with somebody that is an, is an idiot or a flake. Yeah, so I guess you want a manager, then 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 earn a manager. But I guess the moral of your there's a lot of people out there that are managers. Don't go with a manager that's going to make them pay you up front. A manager only makes a percentage of what you make or what he gets for you. Ten, twenty percent is the legal limit. But don't pay a manager up front. Don't pay a manager for anything. He has to get you work, and a percentage comes out of that. That is so true. But I guess, really, the moral of your story is that there is a lot of competition. That is really what you're saying over and over and over again, that you cannot be lazy. So we are going to take a break for a few minutes, but we will be right back with more of Dino when we come back. We'll be right back with Highway to Success with Cynthia McIntosh right after this. What do your status updates say? You're learning a new language? Going all organic? Instead of typing your feelings, what if you could put them into action? by creating a network to help keep kids off the streets in a country like Armenia or in Honduras, bringing IT into the classroom or on a farm in Tanzania, helping stem the world's food crisis by creating a sustainable agricultural program. What if every ounce of your being helped update the status of a person and in turn they did the same for you? Would this be enough social interaction? Or is this only the beginning of something larger? Life is calling. How far will you go? Peace Corps. Get interactive at peacecorps.gov slash game. Hello, everyone. This is Dino of the Ask Dino Show. This new television, internet-based show was developed for you, the new modern recording artist. It will help you big time. I have privately consulted thousands of artists over my 35 year career, but now I can answer all your questions for free right on the Ask Dino Show. You can ask anything you want, music business, recording, production techniques, royalties, publishing, live on stage performance questions. We also have a section where live artists perform and you can be one of them. Just send your questions to askdinoshow at aol.com. You can see all of our shows right on YouTube 24 hours a day. This show is for free and for you. Please send me your questions and I will answer them. Just ask Dino. Dino. He knows.
These are the sounds of someone taking their eyes off the road. Texting while driving is more than distracting. It's dangerous. Do yourself a favor. Do us all a favor. When you're on the road, stay off the phone. A message from CTIA, America's wireless companies, and the National Safety Council. Hi, this is Cynthia with the Highway to Success Show. I want to thank you for listening to our show today, and I sincerely hope that you're learning new and exciting ways to improve your marketing campaign and to build your business. I want to remind you that we will be here every Wednesday at noon, Pacific Standard Time, to bring you experts in the field of social media marketing, promotions, and business management. So be sure to tune in each week. The Highway to Success Show is brought to you by Success with Macintosh, and you can visit us on the web at successwithmacintosh.com or call us at 866-636-4696. That number again is 866-636-4696, or you can visit us on the web at successwithmacintosh.com. Asthma. Chronic bronchitis, emphysema, tuberculosis. These pulmonary diseases affect millions of Americans daily. And if you already suffer from one of these ailments, then you're well aware of the problems that you face. For over 75 years, the Will Rogers Institute has provided health education and research for all. For more information, visit wrinstitute.org or call toll-free 877-957-7575. And find us on Facebook and Twitter, the Will Rogers Institute, since 1936. Hi, this is Nicholas Cage. When you're a teenager, there are a lot of things going on that can produce stress and anxiety. The pressures of school, dating, and the future in general can seem overwhelming sometimes. But there are healthy ways to deal with stress, ways to reduce it and channel your energy in positive directions. And you don't have to do it alone. The Will Rogers Institute has a free booklet with some really helpful information. For your free copy, visit wrinstitute.org and find us on Facebook and Twitter. We're back with Highway to Success with Cynthia McIntosh. Welcome back to the Highway to Success show. I want to remind you that you can listen to this and other Indy 104 shows by visiting Indy104.com and go to On Demand to listen to any of your favorite shows. For those of you who are just tuning in, we've been talking with award-winning record producer Dino Mandaloni, and it has been a very exciting show. Thank you again, Dino, for make, taking the time to come into our show today. Thank you, Cynthia. Having a good time. It's a lot of fun. Good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. We sure are. We're learning a lot yeah. today. Hey, listen, yes. um, we were talking during the break, and you were telling me a little bit about your television show. And I know that, yeah. they, that you cover a lot of information on your show that most indie musicians need to be hearing. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? Well, it's called the Ask Dino Show. And um, basically, it started out where I was... Uh, I kept being asked to be on a television show called I Am Entertainment, and they kept asking me to come back and talk about my career. Well, I said, look, you know, I can't keep doing that. Why don't you start asking me some questions about the industry? So they started doing that. But the lady that was asking me the questions didn't really know that much about music business, so they asked me to do the show myself. So what it is now is um, I have guests come on. I've got, you know, music icons that come on uh, that have been through the business for the last 20, 30, 40 years, and, you know, they've, they've all made a success, what I do is uh, I ask them not only what they're doing now, but I ask them how they did this and how they did that and, you know, this performance, that performance, uh, you know, how they recorded, um, you know, and these are these are icons, you know, and they talk about the, the industry and then we show videos and then I do fun little comedy skits with them and, uh, you know, it's basically, it's an inf- uh, 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 entertainment mentoring show. Wow. That's mm-hmm. a, that sounds amazing. What kind yeah, of... it's all music guests, but then we also have actors on and, and you know, stunt people and uh, movie producers <laughs> and directors that are looking for personnel, maybe music or maybe a- other actors or things, and then they come on and they talk about what they're, well, how they did it. And so we have, we're about 85% music and then 15% other, in, other entertainment areas. So how do we tune into your show? 
Well, uh, right now we're on Time Warner, um, so you can see it on any Time Warner. I think they show it two times on Friday on during the morning and in the evening. But you can see every single show, 24 hours, seven days a week, um, on YouTube um, and Facebook. Uh, I've got I've got my uh, Ask Dino show, uh, Dino Mataloni host. Uh, page and then the Dino Mataloni page uh, on Facebook, and you can see all the shows on there, or you can go to uh, a YouTube and just type in Ask Dino Show, and they'll all come up. And the the full shows are there; they're not little excerpts. The full shows are there. There you go, promoting your business online, as we were talking about earlier, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. And we're also talking to a couple big uh, cable networks right now. That that. See, this is what I'm talking about. I'm building this show just like these people should build their music uh, careers. I, I'm, do, I'm doing the same thing with my show. I'm building a, an audience. I've been on the air for two years now, and I haven't even tried to shop it yet. I'm waiting for people to come to me. And so what, but what I'm doing is I'm making my show as great as possible. I'm making, I'm, I've got a huge audience now, and, 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 but I'm making it great. And, but I'm facilitating it every single day to the world. Every day, mm-hmm. I'm on two or three hours every day facilitating this. So as long as I've been in the business, I'm still doing what these people should be doing with their music career, but only I'm doing it with my TV show. Do you have a Facebook page for your radio show? You mean the TV show? Yes, sorry. <laughs> yes, the TV show. Uh, the Facebook page for the TV show is called the Ask Dino Show, Dino Madaloni Host. And that's uh, M A D D A L O N E. Great. And uh, you, you go. You can just go ask Dino Show, and it'll probably come up on Facebook. And then you can you can like it, or you can go to my personal page, and I'll, then I'll start talking to you, and you can ask me questions, and you know uh, I'll, I'll I'll communicate with you. That sounds wonderful. So there you go, guys. Sure. You can go on there and ask Dino anything you need to know, and he's ready to answer your questions. And don't. Yep, and, that's and be what we're sure. all about. I've been doing this for uh, a long time. You know, I've been uh, in the business. I started gigging. Well, I started playing drums when I was ten, but I started gigging when I was sixteen, and I'm a lot older than that now. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> so I'm tell, gonna tell you, but I'm a lot older than that. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do? Tell me about your studio. Uh, the studio is called Dino M4. I've been here for uh, in this place for 23 years. Uh, it's a uh, full-blown professional uh, recording. You know, I mean, it's 2,000 square feet. We got 20-foot ceilings, ISO rooms. It's not a house or a garage. It's a full-blown professional studio, um, and it's also now a television and film studio because we've, we've got all the lighting for videos. We do videos. Anybody out there needs a great video done, we do that here. I've got one of the best uh, film editors, uh, video editors there is, and Gordon Michael, uh, who's also the director of my TV show. And we also shoot my television show here at my studio sometime, too. So we shoot here and at Time Warner. But the studio is absolutely self-contain- self-contained. It's, you know, it's got the real gear. It's not uh, just a di- the digital gear. We've got, you know, of course, the Pro Tools, then we have two-inch tape machines. So it's a full-fledged, self-contained studio. So we do all kinds of music, and uh, you know, especially in the rock and the pop area. Wow! Talk about a full-service studio, huh? Yep. Yep. <laughs> you do a little. Twenty-three of... years building up. Wow, that's really awesome. So, what do you have going in the future? What exciting projects do you have coming up? Well, the projects I've got coming up, I've got uh, two new shows coming out um, uh, on the Astion show. Um, one of them was. Uh, uh, Prescott Niles from the band The Knack, who did that song My Sharona. He also, you know, played with Jimi Hendrix, and and I mean, this guy's done a million things. They were like, uh, he's talking about all the history that, that of his band. Uh, I got a guy named uh, Buzzy Martin who uh, uh, was a guitar teacher at San Quentin Prison for three years, and now he wasn't a prisoner. He went in and taught guitar for three years of prison, and he wrote a book. Oh, don't shoot! I'm the guitar man, and Eric Roberts is going to play him in the movie. So uh, that's coming up. I'm also directing a new movie. I'm a movie director now. I'm directing a, a new documentary film on Rich Hardesty, uh, independent artist for uh, 20 years. Uh, so I'm directing that movie. Um, also, I just won uh, another award. Uh, what is it called? A uh, Creative Achievement Award for my television show. Uh, so I'm going to get that award, and then also the uh, Record Producer of the Year Award in November. So, and then I'm producing some projects in the studio too. So there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> I guess so. Okay, I have a really, really hard question for you. Then, what don't you do? <laughs> uh, what what don't I do? 
Uh, I don't do enough uh, vacationing. Uh, <laughs> no, I, you know it's funny. I, I, I got to tell you that 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 um, I, I have this uh, kind of a sixth sense, um, and I've I've. I have it because it was, I think it was a, a natural talent, but it's because I've been doing this for so many years um, that I'm just I'm just really good at it. You know what I mean? I just from I've been doing this a long time, and I'm just really good at it from doing it for so long. And that's the truth. You know, I'm not bragging. I'm too I'm I'm, I'm I've been around too long to, to to brag. I don't have to. I'm just stating the fact. I've just done so many things, and I'm just really good at it. Well, I can tell you. Like I said at the beginning of the show. I had more fun watching you in the studio when we were working on on the band that I had put together because you do have fun doing what you're doing, and it shows, man. You just love what you do, and it's really obvious. <laughs> you gotta love it. I mean, you have to, especially if you're doing it for this long. You have to love it, and I love it. I love it even more now. I love it more now, believe it or not, than I did back, you know, in the '90s and the uh, the '80s and even the '70s. I love it more now. Because there's so much, it's, it, it, I'm just so much better at it. It's like if you're a golfer and you, all of a sudden you're really, really good at it, you have so much more fun because you're good. I'm just really having a lot more fun now than I've ever had. That is really wonderful. I know that a lot yeah. of a lot of musicians are really envious right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I, I just what I'm having the most fun at, believe it or not, is my show. If you watch like the paparazzi, the little spoof I just did right. on uh, the. It's called the uh, Dastino Show, Mafia Shooters. It's a, a little spoof I did on the paparazzi, uh, but yeah, it's only five minutes long. You gotta, you gotta go see that. It's with uh, Hector Luis Bustamante, he's an actor on my show, but it's only five minutes long, and we just have a great time. I make up these characters, and we do comedy, and it's just a blast. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. It is really fun to watch you work, and it's been fun having you on the radio show because it just—I can really feel your excitement of you know on what you do. And oh, it, thank you. Thank it's you it's fun to talk. That. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's fun to talk to people that really love what they do, and I think that's important to musicians because obviously they really love their music, and that's what they want to do for their career. And it's it's really very nice to talk to people who have succeeded and are doing what they love to do. And it's encouraging. And I want I want the musicians that we're listening to to be encouraged and know that if you work hard at it, you do what you need to do, you promote yourself, you treat it like a business, you can succeed. And uh, you need to you need to find the right people to support you, obviously. And I I do believe that's really important as well as to get a circle of people around you. We had talked about management. Now I did want to ask you. <clears throat> we were talking about management earlier in the show, and I have. I have two schools of thought that I hear. I have heard people say it is really good to have a family member as a manager because nobody's going to believe in you as much as a family member and nobody's going to be as motivated. And you were saying no. What are your thoughts on that? Um, Well, because um, it's good to have a family manager. Now, if you want to have a family manager, I mean, if you have a person in a family that is a confidant or somebody that you talk to and get your advice uh, from before you make your decisions is fine. But to have a family manager, uh, when you want to be taken seriously in the industry, it's not because the, the family managers may not be good. Or, or, or have your, they, everybody knows that, I'm just talking from the industry standpoint now. Mm-hmm. If I'm dealing with an artist and the mother comes in and I'm talking to the mother, I know that I'm not going to get a very, very uh, objective um opinion or thought or or it's going to be always going to be because oh well this is my son and this is my daughter and uh, i gotta uh, it's not the people it's the industry that if you want to be taken seriously you need to get a professional manager you know and and i'm not just saying family members either i'm talking about anybody if you want to be taken seriously you have to have a professional manager that is a management company not just somebody that's out to look after johnny or joni you need somebody that is a professional manager with a professional company. And any, re- any record company, if they are going to sign you as an act, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to get you a professional manager. They're going to make sure you have professional management. Mm-hmm. And somebody that's a mom and dad that's not a professional management by trade is going to be, it's not going to work. It's not. Now, if you want to have a, you want to have somebody looking after you until you get to a certain spot in your career, then get a, yeah, that's fine. But if you want to be taken absolutely seriously in the music industry, you need professional management. Okay, so I'm Joe Blow, musician, and I want to get started, and I'm looking for a manager. 
there are so many of them out there and there's that's also a very competitive industry there are a lot of people out there claiming to be managers some are some aren't but they claim to be what are some of the most important questions that I should ask a potential manager before I sign up with them uh, well first of all what their uh, what their marketing plan would be what their game plan would be and then uh, um, the most important thing you can do is get references talk to other artists uh, and then if you if they manage you know like successful artists uh, then you know that they're successful uh, but the best thing to do would be to talk to the artists that they've managed and say what's it like I, I, I knew a woman that was an artist manager that came off to be professional and um, all that but every single one of her clients ended up hating her and wanting to sue her um, because I, I knew her in that capacity um, you have to you have to talk to the other artists that the person has managed, um, and also get their get their get their uh, their game plan, get their business plan. Uh, okay, what do you, what are you what are you going to do for me? You know what what you know. Don't the other thing you got to understand too. Don't act as though the manager as as if you're working for the manager. The manager is working for you. Okay, the manager is working for you. Now I'm not saying go in there and be cocky. Especially if you get an artist, uh, especially if you get a manager that's really, really, uh, 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 this really, you know, well-known, then yes, you're going to listen to them. But you have, you've got to go in and say, okay, we want to work with you, but what are you going to do for me? What? Tell me what you're going to do, and then and then talk to the other artists that that that, that they've managed. Okay. Well, if I'm dealing with, we we have a lot of indie musicians on this station. And they're not necessarily going to be able to afford or want to go to or be able to go to a manager who has well-known musicians already under their belt. So if I'm going to somebody that is not necessarily already a real well-established manager, but I want to be sure they do know what they're doing, um, I guess, yes, asking them what their plan is is a good start. Is there anything else that I would need to know about that person before I put my trust in them, knowing that I don't necessarily have... Celine Dion to go to as a reference? Well, the, like I can say, you have to be able to, if they're on the up and up, Cynthia, if they're on the up and up and they're professional, they will let you talk to other artists. They will let okay. you, uh, you know, uh, they will let you uh, ask them like, like anybody else. Uh, you know, if they're going to say, no, you can't talk to them, you have to, a lot of managers out there that are, that are full of crap, they're, they're, they are full of crap and they do nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and they take advantage of the band, and they ask for money up front, and they ask, them, "Well, you know, this is like when you the state when you said they can't afford to go to a manager. You don't have to pay anything. There's no paying to get to a manager. If you have to pay to to have a manager manage you, that's 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 illegal. That is illegal. You you the manager only makes a percentage off of what he makes for right. you. Right. So there's no paying to get a manager. Anybody that says you got to pay us. And we're going to get you into a studio, but you got to pay this, and we're going to da 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 da. That's not right. Don't do it. Okay, good point. So, what about as far as getting? What are your feelings on record labels? Is that a necessity to get started? Uh, well, record labels are you know pretty much you know it's pretty much non-existent now. I mean, they're out there, but uh, they pretty much only deal with well-established artists. Uh, they do sign new artists every now and then, but they're not going to deal with you unless you have, you've already sold mega units, you already have a big fan base, uh, you're playing, you know, your shows are amazing, uh, you know, you're, you're run by professional, you, you, you know, you have management <coughs> or an agent. It's very rare for someone to just, you know, find somebody out of the, out of the, out of the, uh, out of the backwoods and say, oh, you're so great, I'm going to sign you. It doesn't really happen anymore. Uh, there's so much supply, very little, not very much demand. Record companies are pretty much uh, non-existent. Even your major artists are, 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 have their own distribution and their own label and their own, you know. Uh, so re as far as getting that big record deal, I mean, you know, first of all, when you get a record deal, they're going to take 80% of your money. They're going to take 80% of your record sales right there, you know. And, and you get 20, if that, or 15, or even 10. So, you know, it, it better be the right deal. And because this whole thing about getting a record deal, if you really look into it, if you get a record deal, that's where a lot of the trouble starts. And, you know, unless you have a great contract, great, I always uh, tell people to get great, great uh, 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 lawyers, 
representation. Make sure they're music attorneys, not Joe Schmo or mom's attorney, but a music attorney. Um, you know, getting a record deal is they put you on a grand scale, but uh, your money, uh, you do not make the money that you'll be as getting an independent deal or having a distribution deal. Nope. Uh, but the number one thing is your publishing. Always try to hang on to all your publishing as much as possible. Uh, you know, you're going to have to give up some here and there. If you get a publishing deal, obviously, that's why they're, that's why they're in business. But, uh, uh, you know, getting a, that big old, you know, elusive record deal these days is pretty much, uh, you really have to really investigate that before you go for it. Yeah, in this day and age, there's so much technology out there that you can really do a good job or there are people out there that can do a good job with for you without really signing away your life to a record label but uh, the reason I asked you that is because that does come up a lot when I'm talking to musicians they feel like they are not anybody until they have a record label behind them and that's why I asked because there are there still are plenty of people out there that believe that if you don't have a record label you're not a musician yet so but yeah, there's a lot you can do on your own with, with technology nowadays, and a lot of well-known musicians do their own work and have, like you said, have their own studios. And um, I was even just talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago that is has the same school of thought. He feels like he has to have a record label to be well-known, and he actually does have a following, but not huge yet. And he was talking to somebody who claimed to be a record label and was trying to get him to sign a contract and he wasn't sure if he wanted to do it or not and the guy was telling him that he would produce his music and own the music and take a percentage of everything and I was telling him not to and he said but if I don't have a record label that's I'm never gonna be anybody and so I really feel kind of protective of people that go that route and so um, that's why I wanted to ask you how you feel about that well there is uh, anybody can have a record label first of all tomorrow you can have a record label your dad can have a record label okay anybody can say I'm Joe Schmall Records and I got a record label. Okay, so this is this is the trap that a lot of these kids fall into. Mm-hmm. Uh, these guys that have studios. I've had a studio 26 years, and I've never had a record label. I don't want to have a record label. I mean, right. it's it's. I I know friends that have record labels, and they had you know seven figure uh, 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 as far as money to and when they started, and they lost it all. You having a record label, anybody can say, oh, I'm Joe Schmall Records, come on and I'll sign you, I'll bring you to my studio and record you. If you are interested, then find out the track record. Do your due diligence. Don't be an idiot. Right. Okay, Dino, well, we're out of time, but I wanted to thank you so much for coming onto the show, and we will definitely have to have you come back on and share some more of your thoughts with us. Thank you. I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great time, and I hope people watch the Ask Dino Show. Yes, we will. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Just such an interesting guy, has so many experiences, so many accomplishments, so much knowledge. He is just really fun to talk to. I'm going to definitely have to talk to him about coming on to the show one of these days and doing a question and answer with us. I'm sure he would love to do it, and I sure would love to have him do it, so I'll definitely get on that right away. (laughs) Anyway, I just wanted to thank you all for listening to the Highway to Success show, and also wanted to remind you that this show and any of your other favorite Indy 104 shows are available to listen to on Indy104.com. Just go to Indy104.com and click on On Demand, and you'll find your shows there to listen to. And so with that, I'm going to say goodbye and look forward to speaking to you all again next week. Thank you again for listening.